Okay, this is a little interesting. So, here's a finished product. Basically, I no problem with these two sides, the ones with the little, the middle, uh, I don't know what you call these things, the little sides. But, uh, where I'm using this belt sander and I had no real access to a flat part because of this lip, I had to go on the edge. So this one is a little bit rounded, not smooth smooth, but that's fine. It gives me enough to drill into to hold the drill bit for the next step. So that's what we're going to be doing. And I'll show you that once we get that part finished. Okay, so what you're going to do, one eighth inch bit. You're going to drill two holes on this ledge where these two lines are. And then on the opposite sides, on the opposite sides you're going to get below the ledge, back here, really close to this bevel where it starts, like that. And it's got to be super straight. A drill press is better, but if you hand drill it, you can cinch it into a vise and you use the pipe to make sure that it's level, like that. Make sure it's nice and tight, and then you can start drilling. Okay. So we finished our holes, as you can see, two on the ledge and two at the beginning of the bevels on each side. So now we are going to tap them with a, an M5 or a .8 tap. I, I think that you could probably try putting them in the vise, but it shouldn't be too hard that if you use the, the pipe in here, you could probably get a steady enough grip to to just to just tap it this way I think but if that's not good enough then go to a vise or something better I'll do that and show you what it looks like okay so here's what happened the top broke the tight the hole the 1 8 inch hole was way too small it would not accept the tap and it shattered and I even double checked the bolts against the 1 8 inch hole, like uh, I have a measuring guide here, not even close. There's one 1 8 for your 1 8 inch bit. I even broke a bit too, but that's beside the point. So the instructions did call for 1 8 and it did say that, and unfortunately I will have to apologize and change that. So what we did is we actually went with an 11 64th sized bit. It's a couple sizes up because we measured it against the tap, which was like uh, 1 or 2 up. Yeah. 3 sixteenths, or it's really 0.8, but uh, there's like metric on the other side. But anyway, so we, we went with an, a 3 sixteenth, no, an 11 sixty-fourth sized bit. 11 sixty-four, yeah. So for your purposes, the correction is 11 sixty-four. So after I drilled the 1 eighth, I re-drilled them for 11 sixty-four. Then with my broken tap, I very carefully, because these are like 25 bucks each, so I very carefully drilled in and it accepted the tap perfectly. And there's our bolt. Feels a little loose to me, but uh, once we tighten it against our piece in the center, it should be fine. And worst case scenario, we could always wrap the bolts in Teflon tape just to make them snug if we had to. But otherwise, I think that's gonna work just fine. So I only did one to make sure. Now I'm gonna drill the other two, all four holes again with the 11 64th drill bit. Should we confirm that? Actually it does, it fits into 532 too. It's quite snug. It's, yeah, that's the, that is the right mm -hmm. size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 532 might work. Seems like it fits in there. 11 64th, 532nd. And then retap. Hopefully I can do the, all the rest of these without having to buy a new tap. So we'll do that and we'll come back. Okay, so now the tap worked fine. We got the four bolts in here. What we're going to do now is we're going to go back to our nozzles that we made earlier. And you can see that there's two low and two high. So what you're going to do is you're going to center this over top of your nozzle so that each of the bolts lines up with one of the flat sides that you made on your nozzle. And once you get it like that, then you can hand tighten them a bit, like this. And then once you get it hand tightened, as you're going, you just wanna make sure that everything is centered. So make sure that your nozzle's in the very center. 
that. And then once you get it hand tight, you can wrench or whatever your tip is, whatever it accepts, just a maybe a quarter turn in every direction to snug it up nice and tight so it doesn't move around. And then after that, your goods. So then after we get all three of them, I'll come back and show you. Okay, here's our finished nozzles, one, two, three. The tips are centered like that, ba -da -ba -da. right there. And our four screws are holding them in on the bottom like that. And then this is the part that screws into the hose and uh, we'll get to that. Okay, so the next thing we need, these are tuna can lids or just about any other type of tin can lid. You need a slit in it like this, that's exactly the same size as the tip of your hose right here. And uh, if this doesn't make sense to you, it will. Just bear with me. So what you're gonna do, this is a half an inch. I measured from tip to, from side to side here. So we took one of these, I already did one. I'll do one with you right now. So just estimate the center of the can tip. I'm using this because I don't like this tabby thing in my way, so I'm going from one to two. So half will be from one to one and a half, right? So I'm just gonna guess the center and kind of line it up with the center of my can here. So I'm gonna put one there at the one and one mark at the one and a half mark. And then basically down here where we're gonna go with it too. So we're gonna put one at the one mark, one at the one and a half, like that. Next, we just kind of take the ruler and we go from line mark to mark like that. Just kind of guessing. A little bit of a rounded edge on this one. It didn't really come out that round, but it doesn't matter. What I did was I went like this, and then I drew the circle around, but it doesn't really matter because it didn't come out that straight anyway. So let's just guess like that. I'll get a good heavy duty pair of scissors because you can cut through this. Then you go like this, and you cut into it. Like that, and this. And the purpose of this is an airflow regulator, your air gas mixture. Okay, now with this little bit that's left, we're just gonna kinda put little slits, a bunch of slits in it here like that. And then we can kind of bend it over or cut them out, doesn't matter. I try to twist them out with uh, some pliers. It just kinda mangled it a little bit, didn't work out so good, so we're just gonna Push it through, kind of round off with one edge, like that. Flatten it out, and you can see on this side, it's kind of like that. There's, I missed one. Like that, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't really matter, because basically it's gonna look something like this. So once this goes on here, this is gonna fit here, like that just going to slide in and out. So when this is closed, you get very low fuel and it's going to be like a slow burn, like a, a red flame. And you can slowly pull it out to get more and more air and the more you pull it out or take it off completely without that flapper valve to cover this air intake, then it's going to be a hot blue flame. It'll make more sense once you see it. All you need to know then is that you need to cut three pieces of metal with the exact size of the hose, so it kind of moves back and forth fluidly like that. Each nozzle now, you're gonna put a two, um, half inch cut washer. So, you're gonna put two on like this, and then this is your, this will be screwing on here, next, and this just slides on and off as you need it. Now, having said that, you may have noticed something. This on off is getting awfully close. And I noticed that when this gets screwed on, it's clearly gonna be like in the way. Ah, I can't get that on. There. So it's kind of it's kind of touching there, it's kind of in the way, bugging me. Might even melt being up in there like that. 
So originally, I was supposed to use, see this is on and that's off. I was supposed to use ones that are on in this direction and then off in line with the hose. But I couldn't find any like that. S because when you pull it off, you're always supposed to pull off away from the flame so that you're never pushing and maybe moving the hose and the, the flame towards anything. So this way it kind of pulls it away from your work area. You don't want to eat or maybe go like this and your hand slips in front of the flame. So safety reasons it's supposed to be away. So here's what we're going to do. Even though I told you to do it this way, I think we need to reverse these so that on will be straight down and then we push it up to go to off so that it's not in the way here. So we're going to do that. And then at the same time, we're going to add the two washers and screw these on. And then we'll come back. Okay, we turn these around. Like that. Now that's on. That's off. Not very safe particularly, but not too bad either. Two half cut washers go on next. Then your nozzle. Like this. Hand tight. You do need room for your uh, makeshift airflow regulator. Like that. Then the next thing you're going to do is take your pipe. There's your nozzle. The pipe goes in here. Like this. And then your flare at the end goes on here. Like this. Now it is completely done. There is one more step actually, but this part is done. Your nozzle is done. Now there's the other end of the fitting. Okay, so this is basically the last piece. Uh, right here would be your propane tank. This is your quarter inch POL valve. Like that. Then this is your pressure regulator so that you can specifically adjust your PSI of your um, propane. So here we have in. I'll connect that there. And I'll tighten them up after. Then your gauge goes there, which is this one for exact PSI measurements. There's a plug in here temporarily. So I'll just take that out, I think. So I'll do that and then come back. Okay, I finally got that sucker out. It was glued in. And then our PS, PSI valve is going to go in there. So what we're going to do, let's see, it's, if it turns this way, it'd probably be better to put it on. Like this. All right. I'm just going to put some of this Teflon tape on if you haven't seen this before. Give it a little snug pull. Wrap, whoops. Wrap it around. Probably once is fine. And once you get to the other side, just pull it off, finish it. And put it in here. Of course, you want to be able to see it, so make sure that it, uh, if this is up, that this is facing up too, so you can use them together. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Next! Your nipple on this side to connect your hose. So this is a um, quarter inch, let me think now, this is, I believe this is quarter inch to three eighths, something like that, because it's not exactly the same, as you'll see. See, that's your, no wait, this is, yes, this says three eighths, because it's, your, your hose fitting does say three eighths right there, so. This one will fit onto the hose. This one goes into your regulator, like that. Snug, make it a little bit snug there, nothing too serious. Never want to stress these anyway, too much. There. And then, in this case, if you've only got the one, one nozzle that you made like this, then you're going to hook up the nozzle directly to your pressure regulator, like that. 
and then this goes to your your propane tank. And then you can turn this up and down to adjust your, your pressure. But if you're using three, like I am, then I have the other eight foot hose that hooks here, and then it branches off into the three, so I can connect the three onto that end instead. Then, once you hook it up, turn it on, check for leaks. Listen and see if this varies, jumps. Listen for the leaks. You could even use like putting water on all the joints or soapy water to look for bubbles and stuff like that. Try lighting the ends, see if there's any leaks anywhere. Other than that, you're good to go. The very last part is drilling three holes because I have three nozzles so that I can use it standing up like this or I can lay it down on the side to put like um, swords and stuff in and cover. So that's an exhaust port when it's standing up too, but it's also where I will put the blade in. And if I have to, then I will cut it bigger, or if the sword's too long, I can always put another hole in the back, or a double ports for exhaust. So I used a 3 8 7 inch here, basically so this pipe will fit through. This part won't, so what I can do is unscrew it, then put this in, and then screw this back on the inside to help hold it in place. And for the top, I use a larger hole. It's one of these things for cutting um, holes in wood or in walls. And then this one is, actually I'm not sure how big this one is, but I don't, it doesn't really matter. You just get one big enough that you can work with. And this one not too big that the pieces slide out or fall out. And then you're good to go. It is completely finished.